Happy Easter, everybody. Keep smiling. Keep smiling, everybody. Hallelujah. This month is your month of favor. Amen. As I, Amen. 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 As I woke up this morning, that's the first thing that struck me. So I said, I would declare to you, it is your month of favor. Amen. Divine favor. Amen. Doors will be open for you by his favor. Amen. You, will, you will go for interviews and attend stuff, Amen. and you will naturally fail, but supernaturally succeed. Amen. They will just like you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My God. It's your month of favor. Favor will cause doors to open for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. On Friday, we shared in the likeness of his crucifixion. Today, I just want to share briefly in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Romans chapter 6. And verse 5. We've read Matthew chapter 28, and we will go back to that later. But Romans chapter 6, verse 5 says, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Let's read that again. If we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Let me read the amplified. Let me read the amplified. Give me the amplified. Let me see that. For if we have become one with him by sharing a death like his, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life for God. Amen. Amen. If we go back to the scripture that was read this morning in Matthew chapter 28, there was something amazing there. I won't take our time. We're going to just share here, and then we're going to sing some victory songs, some deliverance songs, and we're going to celebrate in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because today is a day where we remember his celebration. Um, in, in Matthew chapter 28, the Bible says from verse, in verse 1, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Three Marys came. The, the book of Mark told us of the three Marys that came. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning. One of the things that we need to understand there was that if you go back to verse 2, it says, Behold, there was an earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came to roll back the stone from the door and sat on it. He didn't roll back the stone for Jesus to come out. Jesus was already out. He just wanted people to come and see that he is no longer because as long as that stone is there, yes. they will assume that he's there. So it wasn't oh, an angel. That, 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 that theory is wrong. An angel came, rolled the stone away, and then Jesus rose. That didn't happen. Jesus had risen, disappeared, gone to heaven, taking charge, and so forth. Then the angel came to roll the stone away because of unbelief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did we get that clearly? Yeah. And so I like to teach the right word of God, okay? All right, so, and there's a reason for that. Yes. There's a reason for that because, that's not my sermon. And, well, let me just say, there's a reason for that. You cannot judge the supernatural, like I said a few weeks ago, by the spectacular. You can't judge the supernatural. Don't always look for something spectacular to come before you believe that God was in it. God, Jesus had already risen before the stone was rolled away. Amen? Amen. You are healed before you are healed physically. Uh, hello? You are delivered before you even see it. You are set free. If Paul, Paul said, I am free, even though I'm bound. Amen? Did I hear an amen? 
So don't wait for a completion. Don't wait for the letter. Don't wait for God has already done it. Did I hear an amen? amen? The stone was rolled away because of him. Some people can see he's not there. Jesus had already risen. As they said, borrowed the place for three days. Let me just move on. His, the, his countenance in verse 3 was lightened and his clothes as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angels answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that, that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Uh, uh, um, and, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Go to verse 9. Verse 9 is where I want to go. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. The King James Version puts it nicely. It says, all hail. All hail. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Amen. Verse 6 says, he's not here for he is risen, as he had said. I brought some pictures. Let me switch off the light. I brought some pictures. Give me the first picture. In, at, 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 at Pastor Tony wanted to, 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 to beat me to it, but he said it. I brought the pictures. No, the first, the, the door. Show me the door first. The door. Switch off these lights. Okay, right. So the door says, in, the, in, 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 in Israel, where you would go, in Jesus' name, uh, um, in February, on there, it is shown there, um, he is not here. I can even see it better than there. Switch off some more lights. I think it's the lights that's disturbing. Aha, yeah, yeah. uh -huh. okay. Okay. Amen. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Or you want more lights to be switched off? Okay. He is not here, for he is risen in the exact place where the tomb of Jesus is. Now, the next shows that there was nothing there. The grave was there. Give me the next picture. No, that's part of the... I'll, I'll get to that one later. Trust me, I'll get to that one. So that's the empty tomb there. There was nothing there. So he, he is risen. He came out. And now, now you can bring Pastor this picture. So Pastor this picture was coming out of the grave... Uh, out of the stuff, uh, spiritually also, she was. She was. She, she also. She went in there, died, rose, and came out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. See, see, she, she had a revelation. She was shocked inside there. She came out humble. Amen. So, so, so will you in the name of Hallelujah. It, it just it's amazing what they put there. It's amazing. What they put up there, they say, they say, believe he is risen. Amen. Amen. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, there were three Marys according to the gospel of Mark. And Jesus told these women, and now this is where I'm getting into that. Jesus told these women, you can put on the lights now. Jesus told these women to pass an important message to his disciples. And this is what I want to leave with you as we celebrate. He said, Pass an important message to my disciples. Yeah. And we are his present day disciples. Yeah. There were three instructions or proclamations that Jesus said that shapes the lives of Christians. That has become pillars or should become pillars of our lives. The three things Jesus told when he, when he first saw them. He told them three things. And those three things are the words of resurrection. You imagine just immediately somebody comes out of the, of, of the grave and is resurrected. I meet you. The first words he says should be the words you should hold on to. Because he has ascended to the Father. And, and the three words. He, number one was hail. Hail in the King James Version. But in the New King James Version, it says hail. The meaning of hail means Cairo, 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 which means to rejoice. So, so, so Jesus met, meets them and says, all hail. What he's telling them is rejoice. Yes. Rejoice, rejoice to be glad. He proclaims to them, rejoice. He proclaims to them, 
be glad. He proclaims to them, thrive. That's the meaning of it. Receive it today in the name of Jesus. Irrespective of the situation or circumstances you are going through, God is telling you today, rejoice. Thrive. Be happy. Be calm. All he sees, and, and the three women understood. When he appeared, he said, all hell. He, they knew. Wow, rejoice. What you think is dead is alive. What you think is over has just started. What you think is finished is about to resurrect again. Rejoice. Be calm. Be happy. And we need to understand that no matter the situation we find ourselves in, we need to rejoice. We need to be calm. We need to be happy. The words Jesus, the first word Jesus said to, all, to his disciples was rejoice. If you've come to church today, sad. Maybe things hadn't worked out the way you expected them to work out. The resurrected king is telling you, all hail. Be happy. There might be turmoil going on at the moment, he said. Be calm. He was telling his I said, he knows that there's so much chaos going on. And he was even telling them there is still chaos to come. But be calm. Amen. Be happy. Amen. Rejoice. Amen. So just imagine seeing somebody just coming from the dead, just rising up from, from the dead. I'm still already afraid. They saw an angel, they were afraid. And then the king of kings shows up. Yeah. We need to understand the king of kings is in our life. Amen. No matter the chaos that is going on, the king of kings is telling us rejoice, be calm. Be happy in the name of Jesus. If we look at that verse, the next thing he says to them in verse 9, verse 10, he says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Jesus' proclamation, and he was telling, he said, no, listen to what he said. He says, go and tell my disciples, rejoice. He's saying, go and tell you, rejoice. The next thing, do not be afraid. First Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, in the Amplified, the popular scripture says, For God did not give us, Jesus did not raise from the dead and gave us a spirit of timidity, cowardice, craving and cringing and frowning fear. But he has given us, he has given us. Nobody gives it to you. Jesus has given you. Jesus in you has given you. It's not a debate. Hello? He has given you. He said he did not give you something, but he gave you something else. He did not give you to be a coward. He did not give you to be timid. Hello, in the name of Jesus. Anytime you see any sign of timidity in your child, prophesy. God, Jesus did not give you that spirit. Anytime you find a situation you don't want to go into, say, Jesus said... Do not be afraid. Amen. When he says do not be afraid, he means he has empowered me for something else. What is that? He has given me the spirit of power. He has given me the spirit of love. He has given me calm. He has made me well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. That's amazing. Somebody rejoice today in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to encourage someone today. It is not by, let me tell you something, let me go back to what I said. It is not by seeing the stone rolled away. Jesus was already resurrected before the stone was rolled away. Even if you see yourself timid, see Jesus in you, giving you a well-balanced mind, a disciplined mind, self-control, power, and of love. That is the word of God to you. Amen. This is what we need exactly today in the resurrection. Because today there is an epidemic of fear all around. There is fear to preach the gospel. There is fear to marry. There is fear to have children. There is fear to relate. There is fear to trust. There is fear to love. There is fear to serve. There is fear to study. 
There is fear to give. There is fear to travel. There is fear for the present. There is fear for the future. Jesus is saying, do not be afraid. Do not let the external affect the internal. My spirit inside you is the spirit of power and of a sound mind. You should stand up and say, there is nothing man can do to me. The spirit, do not be afraid. He has given you the spirit of power, the spirit of love, a well-balanced mind, self-control. Do not be frightened. Do not be alarmed. Do not be put to flight. This is what Jesus was telling them. When he pronounced to them, do not be afraid. They understood what he was saying. Do not be put to flight. Don't run away from situations. He is the risen Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't run away from situation. He is the risen Lord. He has given you the power, the spirit to conquer, the spirit to move on. Did I hear an amen? Amen. Rejoice in being not afraid. Hallelujah. Do not be struck with fear. Do not hesitate. It is that spirit of fear. It is being afraid that causes people to hesitate, procrastinate. People are not moving forward because there's a spirit of fear. People don't want to serve in the house of God. There's a spirit of fear. People don't want to give because they think that their money will run out. There's a spirit of fear. People don't want to love because they think they will be abused by love. You know, I have a principle. Well, I have many principles, but one of my principles is that you can never do wrong doing good. You can never do wrong doing good. You can never. You can never do wrong doing good. You can also never be wrong doing good. We need to begin to receive the word of God. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to love your brother, to love your sister. Do not be afraid to help. Do not be afraid to serve. Do not be afraid to travel. You see, the word afraid there comes from the Greek word, which we all know, we don't know it's a Greek word, but we know it, called phobia. It's a phobia. Even Christians have phobias. You see them. They have, um, there's another thing they have. I I normally look at these footballers when they want to go onto the field. Everybody has one thing. Somebody has to come, a superstition, have to come last. Some of them have to tap the field and they, they tap it, they do the cross and they still lose. I don't understand. What are you? They have to wear their t-shirt backwards, you know, and do all kinds of stuff. And then and there's all those superstitions are as a result of fear. Sometimes even Christians are, are fearful. We even fear to eat. They put something in front of you. Don't eat that food, you know. Yeah, yes, you're not hungry. Honestly, you are, you, are not, you are not hungry. You have a choice. Hello, what did I say? Yeah. You have a choice. <laughs> when, when Paul said, when they just bless the thing and go, yeah, 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 I have a choice. <laughs> yeah. when, when I put food in front. You can imagine putting water in front of somebody in the desert and they say, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> ah, ah. There's, there's a lot of things that we do by virtue of fear. And the, and the society also begins to plant fear in us. Yeah. Today, uh, uh, water is good. Tomorrow, excess of water is bad. Yeah. Today, is protein to eat. Tomorrow, protein is not good. We've come out with another thing. We've investigated that fat is the one. Eat more fat. And we come out with hey, everything. is red wine. is white wine. is blue wine. is all, uh, it's all, uh, it's all, uh, it's all kinds of... Uh, the, the best one is, uh, is palm wine. You come up, you come up with all, and everything that comes up is to instill fear. You can't say this, you can't say that, you can't go here, you can't tell everything. And political, political correctness is as a result of fear. That's right. That's right. Everything around talks about fear. Even the cars that are made now are made out of fear. 
Hello? Oh, we've designed this thing now. It's because of fear. There is a fear in the atmosphere. Even the teachers create fear. I remember when I, when I was my, doing my undergraduates, this lecturer came in. And the first day, first time the lecturer came, first day, final year, my final year, after five years of studying agriculture, final year, second semester. You fail that, you are, you are repeating the whole year. And she comes in, sits down, looks around. Because people, the people, their stare wants to intimidate you, wants to bring in fear. So sometimes when people look at you, you need to know in the spirit how to look back or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. Amen. I was sharing a testimony with some people this, 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 last week when I went for an interview. At, at a point in time, I was a bit timid. You know, so, so Christine had already warned me. I was like, you wrote the thing. They don't want You are the one who... Uh, after first question, after second question, I felt the Holy Spirit, they want to fail you. <laughs> ah, immediately something in my brain switched. Faith arise. Yeah. So I just looked at them and I saw them as Pastor Tony and Pastor Bio. <laughs> so we just came on the same level. These are professors. Because if I didn't see them like that, I would have, I would have problems. So I, I entered them, they entered me, I entered there, I argued with them, I said, no. <laughs> They were asking, said, who, who made you authority? I am authority. 51 years in the business has made me an authority. I was born into this thing. But if, if that, 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 they, they come to timid you. In fact, the way they sat, normally they sat in, in front of you, you yes. see them. One sat on one angle, the other sat on one angle. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you enter the place and you can feel. Yeah, yeah. And you need the Holy Spirit. The spirit of might came upon me. I'm telling you, after the second question, the spirit of might came upon me. With the spirit of might comes anger that you cannot. There is the power of the God in here. Don't come and mess me up. Ah, you, don't, you speak. Don't, God opens your mouth. Don't let anybody, anybody intimidate you. The God Jesus has told you, do not be afraid. The resurrection power is from God. He says, he says for I have not given you. If he had not given us the spirit of fear, he must have given us another spirit, which is a boldness. You interview and see those, uh, whatever you say. Uh, uh, well, are you prepared to do? No. I, said, I told them, no. No. Well, why? well I'm, okay, I might consider it. I left the place even I was shaking. That what you failed yourself. <laughs> I, I, I told myself I had failed myself. I, I, I went in with them. Excuse me. Ah, six years of studying this thing. I know what I'm saying. You can be a professor, but you have no clue. If I want to say, look, you know where I've been, you haven't been. <laughs> Can you imagine telling examiners that where have you? Have you? <laughs> My God. It was the, but I knew it was the spirit of power yeah. that suddenly, a spirit of might yeah. that suddenly come. That is the, that's not, nobody gives that to you. It's by God. Yeah. Don't let anybody intimidate you. Keep, keep your head high. Yeah. The go for, for thou, O Lord, has exalted you. He's the glory, he is the glory and the lift up of your head. Because if you fear, you wouldn't enter certain territories. Hello? I watched a, a, a particular thing I, I, and, and, I, and, I, and my mind changed. I just looked at this. Hey, 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 hey. There was all these executives, all these executives, you know, dressed up in their money suits, probably about 4,000 grand. Uh, and Tom Ford suits, all of them sat down in this, in this executive room and, 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 you know, with all the, 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 the things and their assistants all over there. And then this guy just walks in in jeans. Sits at the table and he walks in and everybody stands up. I feel Jesus. So it's not by way you dress. Every this guy just came in with jeans, one shirt that was not tucked in very well. Sat and everybody stood up. Said, ah, my goodness. Don't let. So it's not the color of your skin. Don't always come up with excuses. Come up with the favor of God. In the name of Jesus. Jesus refused to be intimidated. He says, Do you know who I am? He said it several times. He pronounced who he is to people. Amen. Amen. Don't let fear. There's all too much fear around. And that fear is preventing us from rejoicing in the finished works of Calvary. Amen. Jesus has completed. He said it is finished. When he rose, we rose with him. Amen. The Bible says that when Jesus rose, he told us in the book of Ephesians, he was seated in heavenly places. Yes. 
The word heavenly there means in a place of happiness. So you are lifted and seated with him. He said far above principalities and power. I mean, there's fear, even fear of buying a house. Many people go to, they, you know, many people want to buy a house. They are going to look for a house to buy. They are looking for demons in the house already. <laughs> I'm telling you, mm, I saw a sign there. What sign are you seeing? See, I saw a sign. See, immediately we entered, something moved. Then the next one, oh, I saw somebody, you know, honey, we're not buying that place. Why are we not buying that place? Honey, we're not buying that place. Why are we not buying that place? Because when I entered, I saw the word ekanka on the door. So I will change the door. What's the problem? You know, we come up with all kinds of things from the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. When we entered, when we entered the house we're living now, the, the, the guys had three dogs in there. That's not a problem. Except when we entered one of the citizens, we saw this big, massive python in the place. Now, for African, Caribbean, Ghanaians, and all that, that is a sign that uh, the devil is inside there. They are devil worshippers, isn't it? Uh, I'm living in a house of a previous devil worshipper. All of you are sitting down here. Do you know what they used to do in this place? Do you know what they used to do? They used to make coffins, and you have been, uh, you've been sitting here for 19 years, and you are alive. <laughs> Coffins, coffins. The door in my office is the same door where th that same door is the door of the office of the undertaker. I haven't changed it. It's not being changed. It's staying there. Very expensive door. It's a good one. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a good one. It's a, immediately. And the guy was giving us a testimony. Yeah, that, 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 that python had escaped yes. ah. and was staying in the law for three months. So whether he had given back there, nobody knows. You would have run out. End of story. End of story. For me, it was an opportunity to cut off another 20K from off the house. Because you know, you know, you know, you don't go. If you want to take over territories, yes. there are no territories that you take over that you just walk inside and they say, hey, hey, come and take over. Come and no, you don't. Uh, the Bible talks that there were giants in the land. Yes. And if you want to take over territories, you must be bold, you must be strong by the Spirit of God. Yes. Yes. Say, I reject fear in the name of Jesus. Yes. I am no longer a slave to fear. The last thing Jesus told them, he says, go and tell. Go and tell. This is the instruction that Jesus is still giving us today. And that is to spread the news of his resurrection. The news of resurrection is the news of changing position. That's all. What does resurrection mean? The word resurrection means to change position. Jesus changed position from the grave. He was no longer there to heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And raised us up together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Being in his likeness of resurrection is that as Jesus' position was changed from the tomb to glory, so our position has changed too. And so is the world. And God wants us to go and spread the news that our position has changed. What does that mean? It simply means some certain stuff. If we are resurrected with Christ... It means that we have, resurrection means to awake. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of slumber, you will awake from slumber in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some people are sleeping spiritually. Amen. They don't, they can't see God. Amen. They are fighting battles in the natural. Amen. They are sl asleep to the spiritual. They do understand when certain things come, they should go back into the closet of prayer and ask God, God, what are you saying? They react by the flesh. They are still asleep. You need to resurrect. You need to, you need to wake up. You need to come out. It means, it means to, to stand up. To stand up. Oh, they beat me down. If they beat you down, the resurrection power of God will come into you, cause you to stand up. 
Stand up, arise and shine. He didn't say, I will pick you up. He said, you arise and shine. For your light has come. The light is the power of God inside of you. Tell your children, arise and shine. Pull, pull them up. Stand up. Awake. Come out of your slumber. Come out of your stupor. Come into the light of God. Jesus, when Jesus rose, the Bible says he rose with power. You will rise with power in the name of Jesus. Some of you need to go back and fill in the application form. Some of you need to go, you know, where the power, oh my goodness. Many people, stop saying I can't. Stop saying I can't. I can't. You can't. This is, the, this is the seventh year you haven't done your driving test. You can't. Because you had a little accident. Have you seen those jockeys? They fall off the horse and they get back on it again. Yeah. Hello? You know? The spirit of boldness. When I was learning for my, for, 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 to drive a motorbike, I fell off twice. Didn't tell Pastor D anyway. In fact, I fell off. I injured myself so badly. It was only Emmanuel. And I said, Emmanuel, help me put this thing on there. Is, is your mom around? No, come on, put it there. Put it there. I was wearing long sleeve during summer. She was wondering, like, hang on, is something okay? No, everything is fine. It's just I feel cold. I feel. Because I had a test the next day. I said, yeah. I got, I, in fact, I fell off the bike. Pull the bike up, got on it again, and started to say, hey, You will not defeat me. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Nobody says anything will be easy, mm -hmm. but with God, all things are possible. Yes. And we Christians should know that sometimes we have to fight through. Yes. We have to get up. Yes. The resurrection power is in us. Amen. We should no longer be slaves to fear. Amen. Go and tell, tell people about Christ. Tell people about the resurrection king. It's not good for you to not go. Jesus gave them instruction. Go and tell my disciples yeah. I have risen. You are his disciples today. Yes. What are you telling? What are you saying? What are you telling people? People are in, 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 in pain. He said, tell them. We gave everybody a bottle of oil to deliver people. Go tell them Jesus is your savior. Jesus is your Lord. Amen. Jesus does not count sin against you. Right. You are not finished. Oh, God doesn't love you. He loves you irrespective of who you are. He loved the murderer. He released Barabbas. Amen. He loves you too. Amen. Did I hear an amen? amen? Because as you go and as you tell, God begins to bring boldness to you. Amen. Rejoice. Amen. Do not be afraid. Amen. Go and tell. And, what, and, 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 and that's, the, that's, that, that's the commission God has given us. I walk. You're walking with somebody. Tell them. They will come up to you. People have problems. People have problems all over. Yeah. They're just looking for somebody to tell them. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who has a problem and you say, you know what, should I pray for you? They would, what? I got to the gym a few days, um, last two weeks ago. And I saw this lady that I normally, normally she's, she's, she's one of the cleaners. And I normally say hello to her in the morning. I like to say hello to everybody. Whether you reply me back or not is any yeah. different. It's because one of these days you will need my reply. She said, hello. I said, oh, I asked about you. I heard you went on holidays. My other friend had looked back and I knew I'd said the wrong thing. And she said, oh, no, you know, it wasn't holiday that I went to bury my mom. I said, oh. So I went, dropped myself. So while I went, I said, I asked my words. Ah. The mom, she went to bury her mom. Um, um, they called her. She went to bury her mom in the Philippines on Thursday. By, by Saturday, they had already phoned her that her husband had been taken to the hospital here. By Sunday, the husband had died. Uh -huh. So they told me I dropped my gym stuff in, and I now started looking for her all over the center. When I found her, I said, I've just heard that come here. When people, they would receive, she hugged me, hugged her, I prayed for her, whether I knew she was a Christian or not. 
I prayed and I kept on telling her it would be well. It would, and then her son had an accident again. I said, ah. and she said, have I done anything wrong? You haven't done anything wrong. Don't worry, it shall be better. It shall be. Every morning that I see her, I just eat. I'm praying for you. I'm praying, oh, thank you for praying for me. There's no political correctness. Yes. When people are in pain, when they need to, it's you that is not going and telling. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? They ask you questions, you tell, no, it's God. God is still on, God is there. God is watching over you. Oh, I don't know what I've done. You know, we, 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 the people, there are people around us. And we're just looking at our own little glory. And that's what God wants us to go and tell. Tell them I'm their comforter. I'm their deliverer. Tell them that you are their no longer slaves. Tell them they are free in the name of Jesus. And you also walk in the freedom that God has given you. Don't walk around being intimidated. Don't let people bully you. Hello. Don't let people intimidate you. God has told you do not be afraid. Uh, hello, don't let even you guys who are in, in, in education, don't let don't let education bully no education can bully you. People are not bullying, it's the education, it's the books. When they see the books just bully you, tell you you can't. Look at the books and say I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Did I hear an amen? amen? Let's stand up on our feet. I want us to sing this deliverance song in the name of Jesus. Come.